All right, let's talk about season one, episode 21, Isabel. Okay, that was yet another really, really good episode. I'm glad that we finally met Isabel. I felt like that was a long time coming. (laughs) And I will be glad when we finally meet Catherine, because that has been a long time coming. So hopefully that's sometime soon. I don't know. It feels like uh, the whole Isabel storyline has kind of been taking over the Catherine storyline. So now that we've met Isabel, does that mean that we're going to meet Catherine in the finale? Or are they going to push that off to the next season? Alaric is really becoming one of my favorite characters in this show. Oh, how hurt he was by the way that Isabel treated him just broke my heart. We see that Isabel does have some humanity, at least when it comes to Alaric, and she compelled him. She said, you won't remember this. I'm not sure what this is. Like, I'm not sure exactly what he's supposed to forget. Um, Seeing Isabel as a vampire or the entire fact that she's a vampire or what. I'm not exactly sure what she did to his memory, but I understood the, you know, the gist of it is that she was healing his heart and helping him to forget his pain. I'm really glad because, yeah, Alaric is just such a sweetheart and I've really come to absolutely love him. (laughs) He's really one of my favorites. I can't stand to see him in pain. That was really hard to watch. So I'm glad that uh, I guess he's going to be okay now. So that's good. Okay, initially, (laughs) I wrote in my notes that Bonnie and Caroline and Elena are such good friends. I appreciate how they're so supportive and understanding Uh, with each other and it just makes me happy to not see female characters being catty or jealous or turning against each other. Caroline has had some issues with jealousy when it comes to Elena but she doesn't take the jealousy out on Elena if that makes sense. Hopefully she's kind of gotten over that because I feel like we haven't seen that for a few episodes but you know she's still While she is jealous of Elena, she, like I said, she doesn't take it out on her and she's still supportive of her. And I just really like their friendship. And then Bonnie goes and ruins it for me. (laughs) I didn't trust Bonnie, unfortunately. And you know I love Bonnie. You know how much I have loved Bonnie since the pilot. Since the pilot. But this whole time, you know, I had this feeling They, first of all, I thought they were going to make her, you know, kind of too powerful too quickly. And I was afraid that that might go to her head. And I was afraid that they would kill her grandmother as a way to, you know, motivate her to go dark. And they did kill her grandmother. And so I was kind of expecting like, oh no, is this, (laughs) is my prediction coming true? Is she going to, you know, seek revenge And, um, yeah, is she going to become a villain? They didn't go that route, but I've still been nervous about it the whole time. If I'm remembering correctly, she's the one who offers to remove the spell. She says that she can do it. I did not trust her. I didn't see any reason why she would want to help Damon and Stefan. And I was disappointed that she lied to Elena. In the end, when she's talking to Caroline, she says that she she couldn't do what Elena wanted her to do, so she just pretended. But the way that she said it made it seem as though Elena came to her and said, you know, please do this thing. I need you to do this thing. And which still wouldn't have made it right for Bonnie to lie about having done it, but Am I misremembering? Isn't she the one who says, hey, I can remove the spell. I can, you know, I can do this thing for you. So, I don't know. Um, That was very disappointing. So, are we now seeing that story arc? Is she, is she going to go dark? This weapon is a weapon against vampires. We don't know what it does, but is it going to be used against 
Stefan or Damon, and is that going to cause... I mean, I'm, I know they'll be fine because they're main characters, so I'm not worried about them, but is that going to cause a rift between Elena and Bonnie? You know, because of course Elena will find out what Bonnie did. I can't imagine Elena could trust her after this. So, yeah, it's just, it's disappointing, but it's not surprising because I've been kind of, you know, expecting this the whole time. So... I'm just curious to see how far they're going to take it. it. She might regret it in the next episode. She might tell Elena, you know, what happened. And then they might have to, like, scramble to get the device back or, you know, like, before it's used. I, I don't know. But I feel like this is potentially where Bonnie starts to become more of a antagonist. So I don't know. I guess... We'll see how that plays out. Oh, Damon and Elena. Oh. oh, they have such a connection. I love when they're on the phone. I just love everything. I I can't even. I, I can't even. Oh, I love him so much. You can really tell in this episode how protective he's become of her. I fucking loved that scene with Isabel. That is... I was going to say that was my new favorite scene, but no, I don't think any scene can ever, <laughs> can ever replace Damon's dance party with Vicky. I think that is the most epic scene <laughs> so far um, in, in the show. I cannot imagine anything replacing that, but I think this, this was definitely my second favorite. It was incredible. It was so hot, first of all, and I was like a little annoyed that he was making out with her because I was like hey wait a minute she's you know doing all these horrible things to Elena right and then I was like hmm I don't know like is he just tricking her or what and then boom he throws her on the ground and he tells her that it's a big mistake messing with Elena <laughs> he tells her not to mess with people that he cares about and I was just like yes <laughs> I love it so much oh uh, Elena you know Elena's like why did you think Damon would give me this device and Isabel says because he's in love with you and um yeah Damon didn't deny it did he the rest of the episode he did not deny it so yeah and the look on Stefan's face was just like, I fucking knew it. <laughs> that, that was literally what his face said to me in that moment. I fucking knew it. Because, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's been sensing the heat between them. He's, you know, there are these little moments. And there was a moment in this episode where when Damon gives the device to Elena, he, like, squeezes her hand. And Stefan saw that. <laughs> so, yeah. Yup. And then Stefan confronts Damon and tells him that history will not be repeating itself. Yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> I have a feeling it will be. <laughs> uh, and when Damon said he was here for Elena, oh my god, he was serious too. He wasn't just like needling Stefan, you know, he wasn't just trying to get to him. He meant it. He said, Elena is a very good friend, possibly his only friend, and if she needs anyone to talk to, if she needs anything or she needs anybody to talk to, he is here for her. And he meant it. And it was amazing. <laughs> and I, I loved when Damon said something like, um, you know, because he put together the fact that John is Elena's birth father. Couldn't they have gotten an actor that maybe looked a little bit like her or like dyed his hair or given him some contacts or something because he really looks nothing like her. Isabel, I could see Isabel being her birth mom, but John, really? I don't see that at all. Yeah, so when Damon, you know, put that all together, he's like, you know, I'll let you tell Elena because I know you two don't like to keep secrets from each other. <laughs> right. And then um, I found it really interesting that Isabel said that Catherine found her after she turned. And she said something like genetic curiosity. So does that mean that Catherine doesn't even know why Elena looks like her? 
So is this like maybe not some big thing and just like a simple case of family resemblance? Because I got the impression that there was some some big thing. There's some big reason why Elena looks exactly like Catherine. You know, there was some kind of magic involved or, you know, I mean, I have absolutely no idea, but like some big explanation besides just family resemblance. But if Catherine doesn't even know, and, and of course we don't actually know what Catherine knows. And oh, Alaric, he sees humanity in Damon. Oh, I like that. I really like those two together. I don't know why. It goes against all logic, but I really love those two together. And they only had a couple of scenes. I think they only had like two scenes together, but I don't know. There's something about the chemistry between those actors and um, they just really kind of pop on screen. I really enjoy any time they're in a scene together. Oh, and Damon called Catherine a bitch. Did I mention that? Did I forget to mention that? Yeah, when he was confronting Isabel, he called Catherine a bitch. And I was like, whoa, because I mean, as much as Damon is in love with Catherine, you know, he seems to worship the ground she walks on. I was really surprised that he called her a bitch. But you know, it seems like that's an accurate description. So maybe he's getting over her. So when John says that getting rid of Stefan and Damon was always part of the plan, does he mean his plan or Catherine's plan? I was a little bit confused on that. But yeah, Isabel said, you know, I want to add two more vampires to the list to take out, I guess, with this device or do whatever this device does. I don't know. She said she wanted to add two more to the list. And, you know, he said that Damon and Stefan were always part of the plan. And I just wondered if he if that was his plan or if that was... Catherine's plan because yeah if that's Catherine's plan then she really is a bitch <laughs> even more of a bitch than we already knew that she was but yeah I fucking hate John I hate him with every cell in my body I cannot stand him I can't stand to look at him I hate his face I hate everything about him and I hope that Damon tears his fucking head off please and thank you so that's it for the penultimate episode of the first season. So that means that next episode is the finale and I'm so excited. I have no idea what to expect. I know that this device has got to come into play in some way, but I have no idea what's going to happen. So I'm just really looking forward to it. And yeah, this the back half of the season has been really, really good. I think ever since episode 14, it's been pretty good. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm really, really, really excited for it. So, okay, that's enough of my rambling. 